Oh, did that mean we're on? That mean we're on. <laughs> that mean... This little gospel light <laughs> okay. of mine. I'm going to let mean... it shine. How does that mean that we're on? It means... That's not what you've been doing. It was down before, and now it's up. <laughs> you could go like that. That I mean, That's me. It's my turn. I'm on you this. Know, you just don't... <laughs> it's like, you just don't Where's care the for variety. From? You just no don't variety. know sign language. Oh. Variety is better Good than morning. consistency. What a happy morning. Uh, I'm so glad you're joining us. Um, it, this, is, this might be a long one. I, we apologize if it is. It's a, it's a lengthy psalm. It's a somewhat complicated uh, structure in it, or, or series of thoughts there. And, our, and we have a hymn that's kind of fun to sing. Ever since I was a little kid, I love to sing, Israel, when you're a middle school boy and you don't really have a deep voice and you, you like that, you know, that's a neat sound. So, and Emmanuel, and it's just a nice uh, uh, kind of haunting melody that uh, works really well at night in church on a cold uh, December day. So, we're going to sing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. That's hymn 357. We're going to sing five verses of it, which is a lot. But not all. Oh, come, oh, come, be Manuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice and rejoice. concerned because usually there are lots of comments and I'm not seeing any oh are we on? no we have nine viewers <laughs> so if you'd like to comfort me by just say <laughs> hi um, we really are here okay 
Psalm 50. The mighty one, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes. He does not keep silence. Before him is a devouring fire, around him a mighty tempest. He calls to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me my faithful ones who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak, O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. Your burnt offerings are continually before me. I will not accept a bull from your house or goats from your folds. For every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the hills and all that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world and its fullness are mine. Do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and perform your vows to the Most High and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. But to the wicked, God says, what right have you to recite my statutes or take my covenant on your lips? For you hate discipline, and you cast my words behind you. If you see a thief, you are pleased with him, and you keep company with adulterers. You give your mouth free rein for evil, and your tongue frames deceit. You sit and speak against your brother. You slander your own mother's son. These things you have done, and I have been silent. You thought that I was one like yourself, but now I rebuke you and lay the charge before you. Mark this then, you who forget God, lest I tear you apart and there be none to deliver. The one who offers thanksgiving as his sacrifice glorifies me. To the one who orders his way rightly, I will show the salvation of God. So, you know, uh, how people ask you, do you want the good news first or the bad news first? But we usually always want the bad news first. And I think most people want the bad news first. Get the bad news over with, right? And, then, and let's finish up with some good news. Asaph doesn't believe in that. <laughs> he's not, a, he's not a, a happy ending kind of guy. Nor is he a happy beginning kind of guy. He, he puts the good news right in the middle of this psalm, and it's bad news at the front and the back. Um, it, this, is, uh, uh, this is a tricky psalm. I mean, you need to pay attention. It's not hard. It's not impossible to understand. But you need to pay attention to one of the main themes here. Um, at, at verse 3, our God comes. <laughs> That's, this is why it was chosen to match with O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. But it's not the, our God comes, you know, as a little baby. Our God comes, Emmanuel, like in Matthew chapter 1 or 2. Uh, it it's, um, doesn't have that sense. This is, this is God coming as a judge. All rise, you know, if you come in the courtroom and the judge comes in. If you've ever been there, raise your hands if you've been to court. Oh, about a quarter of you. Uh, <laughs> That's a romper room trick I learned a long time ago. The, uh, it is no joke. When the judge comes in the court, you, you might make a smart remark and out you go. Uh, the, the courtroom is a serious place. Even something as lowly as traffic court, you don't horse around. Uh, when the judge comes in, this guy has your fate in his hands. He can take your money. He can take your freedom. He can, I mean... He can make your life miserable. You pay attention. Our God comes and before him is a devouring fire around him in the mighty tempest. He calls to the heaven above. He, he calls his witnesses. And often in scripture, the, the heavens and the earth are witnesses 
uh, in God's courtroom of our behavior. The world is watching, literally, the planet, uh, and not, not just other people. God calls creation as a witness against us. Gather to me, my faithful ones. It brings the people together. And then verse 6, God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. I will testify against you. Oh, you know you're in bad shape when the judge testifies against you. What hope have you got? So what's going on? We say, O oh, come, O oh, come. We want God to come. But is this what we want? Do we want God to come as a judge? Well, he comes and he says, All this stuff you try to give me, <laughs> He says, it's, I don't want it. I don't need it. It already belonged to me in the first place. And you're giving me these things like you think I owe you. I, I have watched this. Um, you know, people who, who have this idea that, that uh, if, they, if they devote an hour a month, an hour a year, you know, I come to church at Christmas. I, I regularly come to church at Christmas. I have a relationship with God, you know. Uh, they they come and they give this little thing to God. Yeah, you should be proud of me. I did this. Uh, I came and I sat through a service. But what is that? It is nothing. I, or if you come every week, or if you come every day, whatever you offer on God's altar, he says, I don't need the bull from your house. I don't need goats from your flocks. I don't, every beast of the forest belongs to me. You giving me things does not put me in your debt. The judge says, the judge does not owe you anything. Well, we often say, you know, what did I do to deserve this? Or what did I do to, to deserve better? What is it God wants? Well, we, get to the, we get to the middle of the psalm. Remember I told you the good news is in the middle. Do I eat the... If I were hungry, I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> I love this line. Uh, the judge is a... Uh, He's one of these TV judges. He's a little more funny. Do I eat the flesh of bulls? Do I drink the blood of goats? Yuck! No, God doesn't need that. God is not a man. He's a spirit. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving. It doesn't even cost you anything. Recognize you are in his debt. Recognize what he has given you, even when you have suffered a loss. But look what's Look what God has given you still. Perform your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. That section right there, verse 13, 14, and 15, that's what God desires. That's at the heart of this psalm. God does not desire you to give him this and give him that. God desires you to turn to him for help. God wants you to, to turn to him when you are in trouble. God wants you to turn to him with all your needs and then, recognizing what he's given you, then give thanks to him. And that may mean that we, I mean, that does mean that we do all these things. We worship, we sing, we, we, we join together with other believers, we, uh, we serve others. But, but because God has been so good to us, when we look at what God has done and we say, thank you, that's the sacrifice that God desires. Our love, our, our trust in him, uh, and our turning to him. And then, then he goes back to, but to the wicked God says, that there's still some prisoners at the bar over here who, that, oh, I'm not going to give him that. I'm not going to, I don't need him. And, then, and he says, who do you think you are? And then those last closing verses there are about God's uh, disgust with them, that they will not turn to him for help. And then in gratitude, the one who offers thanksgiving as his sacrifice glorifies me, he says. O come, O come, Emmanuel. We desire God to come, and we want it to be a gentle, happy thing. And it is. Christmas is a wonderful, glorious thing. But you do need to remember, Jesus didn't come just to, just to be cute and adorable in a manger. Jesus came to die. Jesus came to be the judge, the jury, 
and the executed. He came to be the one who would stand as the prisoner in our place and take our punishment. You better believe God takes judgment seriously and we, we should be so thankful that Jesus came to judge our sin in himself. <sighs> Heavenly Father, it should be so easy for us to turn to you in our need because we, are, we have so much need. And yet so much of our lives we try to go it on our own and we try to think that we've done some good thing. Lord, help us to not think of ourselves more highly than we ought, but to recognize that you, you are the source of every good thing in us and around us. Lord, in our hardship, in our times of trial, for those, uh, my, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ who are anxious and worried today, for Jim and Ellen, uh, with Jim in the ICU, for brothers who are grieving, Lord, grant that, that we and they may see your hand of mercy and blessing. Turn to you and give thanks to you for sustaining and keeping them, for giving them good gifts, even, even when some of them are not the gifts we most desire right now. Give us faith and hold us as your own until at last all judgment is done and you welcome us to your home. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. And Karen didn't give me 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes signals today. Yeah, oh. because it's 47. and 47 minutes? <laughs> no.